Hey everyone, it's Anthony, and today we're going to be exploring the programming language called Julia. So Julia is written like a script, but when you actually run the code, it's more it's compiled and then run. So it's the idea is that it's easy to program in. It's not uh, it's not like uh, C or C plus plus. Maybe a little bit harder, really strict syntax, and a little bit hard to experiment with. But instead, it's meant to be easy to write, but also fast at the same time. So the goal in this video is to explore Julia, try to learn a few things about how it differs from Python. In order to show Julia, I've coded up some machine learning optimizers, and we're going to talk about them briefly. And we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of Python versus Julia while working through these optimizers. So on the left over here, I have my Julia uh, notebook. So this is also something kind of interesting, you know, with the Jupyter ecosystem, we can make kernels for different programming languages. It doesn't have to be just Python. Uh, but here we have a Julia kernel, and on the right, I have a Python kernel. And I'm just going to, I pretty much took the code from Julia and just directly ported it over to Python and just changed around a few things. So you can see at the beginning here, we have to import a few things. And, you know, it's pretty similar. Next. Um, I've generated some random data, which is here, and then I'm making a data frame and I'm writing it to a CSV file. I'm doing the same thing over in Python using pandas in a data frame. Also, I have the option of instead of generating the data in this function, I can also just read the file, which is actually what we want because we want to do a direct comparison between the two languages. Uh, using the exact same data. So after I've generated my data, I can plot it and you can see, you know, there's similar plotting capabilities in both. So some interesting things to note just about the difference between Julia and Python. In Julia, everything goes, um, instead of like a, a tab over, I need to put end at the end of everything that would normally represent the end of a tabbed over region. So I have a function and then end my if statements that if else end and so on whereas in python you know i just have my function and then everything tabbed over if statement everything inside that tabbed over um, and that's that's one pretty big difference another big difference is in python you know i have numpy to do my numeric calculations which is actually you know running c in the background whereas in julia i'm basically natively operating on these lists, which are kind of acting like arrays. So there's no difference between the idea of like a list and like a numpy array, which is always a little bit of a pain when we're converting back and forth between a numpy and a list. Uh, that's something that we do quite a bit, but in Julia, there's no need to do that. Okay, so we plotted the data. You can see it looks exactly the same in both languages. Um, next, I set up a few functions. We're gonna calculate a derivative of a function in a minute where we're just going to evaluate the function and then take a small step, evaluate it there, take the difference, it will be like the delta y, and then divide it by our step size. And that's going to be our derivative evaluation, which is shown here. You can see I actually take a step in the forward and backward direction and then divide by two times the step size. And it's the same thing over in Python. Uh, we want to see if our optimizer is stopped, so I have this function in Excel changing, which is just calculating if you know the values are changing significantly still. So because we have numeric data, it's not a like an analytical equation. We need a way to interpolate between or yeah, interpolate between the different points in our data set. So to do that, we're just going to do a linear interpolation from like one point to the next. So over here I have a line linear interpolation and pretty much something similar in, in Python. Maybe one difference is over here I have these like if statements. However, in Python I had to make this x value into a numpy array, then make a mask in order to check for the special cases when I'm trying to evaluate a point that's beyond, beyond the data that I use to generate my linear interpolation. Also, interestingly, for both languages, there are functional pro programming languages. So this function is actually 
generating a function. So you can see here, it's giving me this function f. Over here, I'm getting this function f as well. Here, I'm just doing some quick plotting. I'm going to plot our results. And next, we're going to actually start with our first optimizer, which is just a simple gradient descent. The setup is very similar in Python and Julia. And when I run both, I can see that neither one of them actually let me just run them all real quick. So one thing to note about Julia is that it takes a minute to import everything, which Python uh, doesn't. So this this beginning cell is going to take maybe a minute to run, which is kind of annoying. But once it gets going, it'll, it'll be plenty fast. OK, so we can see that the Python is already finished. It's taken 18 steps, and it didn't find the minimum, but it made, it made some progress towards it. Next, I programmed a common optimization function in machine learning, which is to use mo momentum along with your gradient descent. So this momentum, the idea of momentum is that if you're going down a hill, even if you hit a small bump, you still want to keep going because you have like lots of speed and energy. So if you hit a small bump, that's maybe in the opposite direction. Don't worry about it. You need to consider like the general direction you've been going the last several steps. So you can see that when I run the function, it gets a little bit lower, 0 0.45, whereas just a raw gradient function got 0 0.49. Uh, next is RMS prop. So this considers the size of the derivative as well. And um, however you can see, at least in this case, it got stuck here at the beginning, which is not, not great. Finally, we have our atom, atom optimizer. So the atom optimizer is probably the most common, at least it's the one I'm used the most. Method and machine learning for optimization of your weights of your neural network. And when we run the atom optimizer, basically it combines the RMS prop with the momentum optimizer, kind of combines the two ideas together. So you have to keep track of two different things, the momentum and also this kind of like velocity like term from the RMS prop. And you can see it actually does get pretty close to the the minimum and it took 298 iterations to get there now the julia function the julia version you can see it so starting out with the, the gradient descent optimization if we just do a comparison you can see it's finally run it says it didn't terminate however it did get a lower value which is kind of interesting i'm not entirely sure how i was able to do that because i coded them exactly the same uh, next, we tried the, the momentum function. And after 46 iterations, it got 0 0.44 as its final value. Um, so you can see it actually didn't do quite as well as the, the gradient, just the gradient descent method. Um, however, this one did terminate. Kind of interesting. And then the RMS prop doesn't do great either. It doesn't terminate. The atom optimizer. Uh, it does similarly, it does pretty well. And interestingly, it got a different value than the Python version, so 0 0.25 after 67 iterations, whereas the Python version got a 0 0.29 after 298 iterations. So you can see there's, they're quite similar. There's maybe a few nuances of differences, but in general, their Python and Julia are programmed similarly. So now that we have them running, we want to try some other interesting things, which is really playing to the strength of Julia. So we want to run them as a script and see what kind of speed we will get. First, I basically took this J3 and made it into a, a script version. Similarly, this P3, I converted into a script, which I have here. So these are basically taking all the functions and just putting them into a single file. So I took the, that file and then I'm going to import it into this J4 function. And over here is the P4 for Python 4. And you can see that um, they're pretty much exactly the same in their setup. And also what I'm going to do is and include the file that contains all those other functions from in the J3 and P3. So this include J3 underscore optimization JL is basically equivalent to from p3 import optimization import star import everything then in order to make a comparison what i'm going to do is run all these optimizers 
first I'm going to run for 300 iterations of everything in this loop, where the stuff in this loop includes first making a new function. So I'm going to generate some new random x and y points. Next, I'm going to make my interpolation function that we saw earlier. So again, it's we, we've generated some points, but how do we evaluate the function between the points? That's what the interpolation is doing. Next, we're going to run our gradient descent, the momentum version, the RMS prop, and the atom ver version on this function and see what we get. So the idea is to see which one actually runs faster. And let's actually find out. So here we go. Okay, so you can see on the left over here, after the imports happened, I have this time function, and I say begin, and then down here is my n, and it's just gonna time how long it takes to run. So for 300 iterations, it took 7.42 seconds. Let's see how long Python takes. Okay, so you can see the Python is finally finished running and its total time from start to end was 341. So that means that the Julia version was 45 times faster than the Python version. Now, th there's some reasons for this. You know, if I look at my Python implementation you can see I'm not using numpy all the time. So for example, in this numeric derivative, I pass in a single value for x, evaluate it, and I, know I return the value. And here, this is not necessarily in numpy. Um, and, there, and there's a lot of other things I could probably do to optimize it. But, but the key thing is that, you know, I don't want to spend all my time thinking about like how I can go about optimizing something optimizing the code. It's more of like a secondary consideration. It'd be nice if I could just use the language and its tools by default, the default tools in the language and get the performance that I'm interested in. So, could, so this is pretty interesting just to see how much faster Julia can be. It does take a little bit of work to you know, like figure out what the differences are between Julia and Python and kind of, you know, relearn a few things. But in general, it seems like a really promising tool that I want to I want to spend more time into investigating. So thanks for watching and I hope you found this comparison between Python and Julia helpful.